What are some things that I've said about my quadcopter? Why aren't you working? Uh... Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. Today we're going to be talking about troubleshooting a brand new quadcopter build because I know that all the rage right now is like these these cine whoops or these these FPV uh, cinema drones. Um, mainly because of like the DJI digital stuff. So now the DJI people are like, whoa, this is a thing. And it's been a thing for a while. It's been way before I got into it. Um, but so now more people are building their DIY uh, FPV drones and they're hitting some, some snags because they're probably used to a lot simpler like well, basically not having to do everything yourself in terms of building. And so you can come in to come across a lot of problems. So today we're going to talk about sneaky things that you might miss when setting up your quadcopter for the first time, whether you're building it yourself or maybe you just built one um, and it's not working the way that it's supposed to. So let's get started. Number one, propellers on backwards or wrong in the wrong order. The propellers have a top and a bottom and you need to make sure that you have the, the them pointing upwards. So usually it's the side with any kind of writing on there. And then also you need to make sure that the propellers are in the direct in the in the correct spinning direction with the motor. So the the propellers have a forward direction that they spin and usually like on this one there's actually an arrow which tells you which way they need to spin and so you got to make sure that that matches up with the way that the motor spins. Number two, loose propellers. This is a pretty common one uh, because usually uh, these motors have uh, self-locking nuts and they're they're like they're made of nylon and so the nylon the the, the part that makes the the nut lock on the thread is really tight sometimes and so what people might do is they'll they think they tighten it down but then the the propeller can actually spin freely on the actual motor shaft so you really got to make sure you crank those down i mean obviously you don't want to strip out the threads or something but you want to make sure that you can hold the motor and not move the propellers. So tighten those propellers. Number three, physical motor direction and in terms of which way the motor spins. So you, you need to make sure that uh, typically um, your quadcopter is going to have the two front motors spinning in opposite directions and the two back motors spinning in opposite directions. Or you could look at it like the two diagonal motors are going to be spinning in the same direction. If they're not spinning in the correct direction, what you need to do is is there's two ways you can do this. You can do it through the the ESC configurator, so like on your computer basically, um, usually through Betaflight, but you also have to download another app for your ESCs to tell them that you want the motor to spin the other way. Possibly an easier way of doing it is you just take two of the motor wires that are connected to the ESC or the, or the all-in-one ESC board and you just switch any two of the three motor wires, and it will cause your motor to spin in the opposite direction. So personally, I find this to just kind of be the easiest um, if you can get to the wires and stuff, because then you don't have to hassle with like connecting it to the computer and all that stuff. So whichever is easier, but you got to make sure that they spin in the correct direction. Number four, beta flight motor direction. This goes right along with the, all the motor direction stuff. In beta flight, you'll see there's a little diagram of the quadcopter, and it will show which way the propellers are supposed to be spinning you need to make sure that your propellers are actually physically spinning in that same direction as what is as the little diagram. Um, if they're not, if they're spinning the reverse direction, then what you can do is click that little box that says reverse propeller direction and it will, it will, you know, it, it should show that the propellers are now spinning the opposite direction. But keep in mind that does not actually change the motor direction of the, the physical motors in the way that they spin. What that just does is it lets Betaflight know, okay, this is how they're supposed to be spinning. Um, so, so you gotta make sure that you change, if you need to change the actual physical motor direction and that that physical motor spinning direction matches the little Betaflight diagram that says which way the motors are spinning. Number five, Betaflight motor mapping. Now, motor mapping basically tells um, the flight controller, which motor it should spin up for which way it needs to go. Usually this is like less, a little bit less common, but it could happen. Like if you need to flip your flight controller 
and all the electronics like upside down or something. And so now like the left is right and right is left and that sort of thing. So just, just keep that in mind. Normally it's not a thing unless you're doing some kind of strange build, um, but it's possible. And so motor mapping changes, uh, it tells the flight controller which, like where the actual physical motors are and which ones it needs to spin up or slow down in order to actually keep the flight controller um, level. Well, to, to make the quad fly the way that it needs to fly. But like I said, it's not super common, but I just want you to at least hear the term motor mapping and kind of understand what that means in case you need to do it. Number six, flight controller orientation. So the flight controller board on the quadcopter is basically like a little brain. It's the little brain of the quadcopter and that has all the sensors and the little computery chips and that sort of thing. And on that flight controller board, the physical board, there's an arrow and the arrow points the direction that the flight controller thinks is forward. So if you are in a situation where you have to rotate your flight controller board and so now the, the, the arrow points like say to the left, what you're going to need to do is go into beta flight and under the flight controller orientation uh, little box there, make sure that you type in the number of degrees to basically say, okay, the flight controller is pointing this way, but really the actual forward direction, we're going to change it to this many degrees so that the flight controller thinks that the forward direction of the quadcopter is actually forward. I think that made sense. Number seven, flight controller calibration. So the flight controller calibration happens on the main page in beta flight. And basically what you want to do is set your quadcopter on a level surface and then hit calibrate. And what that does is it tells the flight controller what is level. So if you're asking it to auto level the quadcopter, um, then that is, that is the position that it's going to go to. So if you had your quadcopter at a weird angle and you hit calibrate flight controller, well, the flight controller thinks that this is level. So if you go into auto level mode, well, this is the, this is the angle that you're going to be at. And so you're going to be flying sideways. So if you are having drift problems or something, try calibrating the flight controller. Number eight, arm angle. So the angle, the arm angle in beta flight, uh, sometimes called the small angle, it determines when you can arm your quadcopter. So so I guess this would be like for safety reasons or something, um, but you want to set it to 180 degrees, like pretty much all the time. And what that's going to do is actually disable the arm angle. So what that means is um, like if you had it set to like 20 degrees or something, if your quadcopter was tilted more than 20 degrees, you would not be able to arm your quadcopter. So if you think you set everything up right and you're just not able to arm it for some reason, uh, well, one, just try setting it totally level and see if you can arm it. And if you can, that means that you need to, you need to go in there and change your arming angle. So I would say to 180, cause then that way you'll be able to arm, you know, upside down or something in a tree, um, and still be able to arm the quadcopter. So possibly you could get out of that situation. Number nine, motor stop. Now motor stop in is, is a thing in beta flight, uh, in the configuration tab, I think. And what that does is it determines whether your motors are going to spin as soon as you arm your quadcopter. And I I would say make sure you disable motor stop because you want your motors to spin. They'll basically just spin at the lowest setting. So like what's called like motor idle. And, and I think this is really important to have it because it lets you know that your quadcopter is armed. So that way you don't get into a situation where you accidentally flip the arming switch and you don't realize it. And then you bump the throttle and boom, your quadcopter is just going somewhere. Again, if you're in a situation where you think you set everything up correctly, and then for some reason you flip the arming switch and nothing's happening, well, that could be that motor stop is on. The way you test that is you just, you know, raise the throttle when, when your quadcopter is armed. And if it starts up, well, then that's the situation. But I would go in and disable motor stop. Number 10, arming switch not set up. So, that happens in the modes tab in beta flight. You want to designate one of your switches on your flight controller as an arming switch. Otherwise your quadcopter is just going to be disarmed and you want an, ar an arming switch because it acts like a safety. Um, so this way you're not going to accidentally bump the throttle and just have your quadcopter just do something you don't want it to do. So you're going to have to flip that arming switch before you can do any flying. Number 11, what even is beta flight? Well, if you're asking this question, most of the stuff that I've just talked about probably hasn't made any sense. 
But if you are curious about what Betaflight is, and because maybe you just don't quite understand it, that's totally understandable because I didn't get it when I was first getting started either. So go check out this video. I'll link it right there and in, in the description where I, I explain Betaflight for beginners and talk about basically the main uh, pages that you're going to want to pay attention to and the main features that you're going to want to change in Betaflight. Um, but basically, it's just an application that you download onto your computer and you connect your quadcopter to your computer and you use Betaflight to change the settings in the flight controller, which is like the brain of the quadcopter. So it's kind of like brain surgery. Sort of. Number 12, your rates are just way too high or touchy or twitchy. If you feel like you can't control your quadcopter at all, well, chances are you might just be getting started and it's, you're just learning how to do it. But it could also be that your rates are too high. Now, what are rates? Well, rates are basically the, think of it like the sensitivity of your of, of your sticks on your transmitter of, of trying to control this thing. So if you have very high rates, that means that your quadcopter is going to turn and flip and roll very fast okay and you can change other things to 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 change the feel of the stick so you have your basically like your maximum uh rotation and and that that would be like in degrees per second is how it's measured so if you're doing 360 degrees per second that means you're going to do a flip in one second so that's kind of slow but i would say have start with very low rates very low rates probably add some expo. Um, in fact, I, I think I'll show you right here the rates that I usually fly with this quadcopter. And I really like them. And partially, I've just gotten used to them. Um, so that would be another tip would be just to to get some, you know, maybe change the rates a little bit, but just fly it a good bit and see if you can kind of get used to the feel of it before you decide whether, you know, whether you want to change a bunch more stuff. So that, that was kind of a little bit more information than I intended. But still useful. So make sure that your rates are not too high. Personally, I think the default rates in Betaflight are not very good. Just a little bit ago, I was flying the Cinecan with the stock rates, and I thought there was something wrong with the receiver connection because it just was not behaving like how I normally you know, fly the fly my quadcopters. And so it, to me, it felt like the, the receiver was like dropping out because like I would give it an input and then it wouldn't wouldn't go until like way later and it was just it was being weird so if it feels like the like it flies really poorly it might just be your rates number 13 now this is really just like a safety tip but never ever ever hold your quadcopter and turn it on okay you want to have your hands far away from these little spinning blades of death um when they're spinning okay now look you don't have to be like unnecessarily afraid of or irrationally afraid of the you know motors and the quadcopters but you do want to have some healthy respect for them because they are spinning really fast and they will cut you and you don't want to end up like this guy oh my finger really yeah oh my finger dude <laughs> oh my god don't pick up your fpv drones while they're on that is incredibly stupid and we know that now. And hey, on that note, actually, just don't fly this near people either because it might be like, oh, it's fun. I'm going to like buzz my friends or something. And it's like, okay, kind of cool. But then like if you actually hit somebody, that would be not good. And uh, even if you just, you know, kind of run into them with the propellers, you know, that, that would not be a very nice thing to do. Number 14, receiver settings. Now, you see, when you're talking about your receiver, the 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 one of the most common reasons that people like have trouble with their quadcopter not responding with their transmitter is is that the transmitter won't be bound to the receiver. So you need to do that. There's a binding process where you get your quadcopter receiver to talk to your transmitter. Okay, but once you have those talking to each other, you do need to have the receiver talking to the flight controller. So you need to set up certain parameters on beta flight to make sure that your quadcopter flight controller will recognize your receiver. So the big ones are going to first be the UART ports. And so the, a UART is going to correspond to pads on the flight controller. So UART1 would correspond to RX1 and TX1 and so on. And the UART2, TX2, RX2, etc. And so usually you're going to connect your uh, receiver to an RX pad. So depending on what kind of flight controller and receiver you have, you will need to connect it to certain pads. And once you connect it, once you solder the physical connection of the receiver to the flight controller at that particular pad, you need to make sure that you enable the, the receiver 
in the UART section in Betaflight. So you'll see like it'll say Serial RX and you need to check that little box on the correct UART that corresponds with the correct tab. So that's the first thing you need to do. Then in the configuration section in Betaflight, you need to scroll down to the little RX settings box and you're going to want that to be, I mean, typically, usually you're going to want that to be set to a uh, serial receiver and then the serial receiver provider, you want that to be set usually to IBUS or SBUS, but w just make sure that it matches whatever your uh, receiver is. So um, the protocols, those are called protocols. They change uh, depending on the brand, but basically you should be able to find out all that information. But if you're, is, if it seems like your receiver is just not working, then that might be something you need to check out. Number 15, flight controller firmware flashing. Now you might be thinking, like when I first started with this, I was like, flashing a flight controller like what does that even mean like what like firmware like what huh but it, look it's basically like it's kind of like you're updating your operating system on your on your computer or your phone that's basically what it is and so when you flash the flight controller um it kind of it varies with the flight controller um but but some of them need to be put into bootloader mode which allows you to basically update the the firmware on the flight controller and so you do all that stuff through beta flight but depending on the type of flight controller you have, you might need to press a button to get it into bootloader mode, or you might even need to actually connect like a stick a paper clip between two pins to get it into bootloader mode. That's how the original uh, Wizard X220 was. Um, and then some of them, they just connect automatically. And, and you can just, you just plug them, plug the little USB cable in, uh, connect it to Betaflight, and then you can flash it right there on Betaflight and you can download the firmware from the internet and then you can look up, um, in order to actually do that, you need to just look up the manufacturer of the flight controller. Usually it'll tell you like in the manual, if, it, if you get a quadcopter with a manual, and it'll say what the target is. The target is basically the name of the firmware that you want to load on the flight controller. So that process can be a little bit tricky for various reasons, but if it doesn't work, just try it again. Also, you need to make sure that you have a USB cable that can actually send data because some USB cables are just made for charging. So if it just does not work, swap out your USB cable and try a different one. So that was a lot of detail about the flashing process, but basically sometimes you need to update the flight controller firmware in order for your quadcopter to work perfect, uh, per, 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 properly perfectly it's not gonna work perfectly there's nothing perfect and number 16 drivers now this is actually this has more to do with the actual quadcopter setup like when you're connecting to beta flight uh, but the driver because like look you may know what a driver is and that is great but i did not know what a driver was when i first got into quadcopter stuff so drivers are basically just like little programs the, you think of them like tools like a screwdriver in a way that allow you to get your quadcopter to talk to your computer. And so it's just a thing that you download from the internet onto your computer. And it just basically, it, I don't know, you can think of it like a translator. I mean, just uh, that's more of like a metaphor, but it allows your, your quadcopter to connect to your computer and your computer recognizes it. And then you can connect to beta flight. So that's basically what a driver is. And sometimes if you aren't able to connect, you need to download one of these drivers. And you can see on the main page in Betaflight, there's a list of different drivers. And I'm not sure, it depends on what kind of quadcopter flight controller you have, and then also kind of like what your what kind of computer you have. You don't always have to download the drivers, but sometimes you do. And if your particular, if your computer or your quadcopter combination is seems like it's just not working, you might need to download those drivers. Again, that is definitely not a full, complete list of possible reasons that your quadcopter is not working, but hopefully this helped you and maybe figured out why your quadcopter is not working. If you have questions about uh, troubleshooting stuff, or maybe if you thought of something that I missed, let me know in the comments below. And also, hey, for people that, uh, that have had issues and they fix them, maybe we can make this extra helpful for people that are trying to figure out what their problem is. And so leave a comment with your solution and maybe do it like like problem and then solution uh, format so that way people can can you know find it more easily in the comments. But that would be cool because there's a lot of um, honestly the the learning curve is really high on these things and when you're just getting started you might have a problem but you it's hard to figure it out even if it's a simple problem because you don't even know 
like what keywords to to use when searching for, the, for fixes for this problem or like what the problem could possibly be caused by. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. If it was, let me know, leave me a comment and hit like on this video. I'd appreciate that. Um, thank you all for subscribing uh, to this channel. If you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so because I love talking about quadcopter stuff, especially for beginners. So if you're into that sort of thing, hit that subscribe button um, and let me know uh, what other kinds of videos you'd like to see regarding quadcopters and FPV flight and all fun things like that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again very soon.